Everyone has questions. Why am I here? Where will I go when I die? Is there really truth? But not everyone has biblical answers. Welcome to The Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study the Bible to draw closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here is Pastor Tom Brock. Welcome to The Pastor's Study. In 1628, John Bunyan was born in England. He became a Puritan pastor, and because of his Puritan faith, he spent 15 years in England in jail. At age 50, sitting in jail, he discovered he had the gift of writing, and he wrote a book that some people think is second only to the Bible, Pilgrim's Progress. And then for the last 10 years of his life, he died at age 60, he wrote Christian books that became very popular in England. But he didn't know he had the gift of, of, of writing until he was 50. My question for this TV show is this, what gift is slumbering in you that you might not even know you have that God wants you to use for his glory? Today we're going to talk about what are the 19 gifts of the Holy Spirit? How do you find out what your gift is? Let's go at this. Would you take out your Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and let's find out what our spiritual gifts are. If I can tell you quickly how I became a preacher. I was majoring in philosophy at Grinnell College, which is not a Christian college, pretty hostile to the Christian faith. And without going into details, I got a word from the Lord. Tom, you are to transfer to a Christian college, major in religion, and become a preacher and a teacher. And you know the two things that I know how to do? I can preach and teach. I'm not a good church administrator. Don't tell me to run the finances of your church. I'll have it in the black or red. I don't even know what it's called. I'll, let me preach and teach. <laughs> That's the key. Find out what your spiritual gift is and do that for the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we do want to pray. If there's anyone watching this program and there's a certain gift you have given them to serve you and your church and they don't know what it is, Lord, make it clear to them and may they not wait till they're 50 or 60. May you clearly show them what they are to do and then may they do it for your glory. Speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul the Apostle, about 55 AD, writes this to the church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're starting at verse 27. Paul writes, Now you, Christians at Corinth, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Here's the first point. Christians, you are the body of Christ. That's kind of a big deal. Let me explain Paul's body analogy. Uh, you're looking right now at a human body. I got a nose, I got a mouth, I got ears, I got fingers, I got legs, I got feet. I'm one body made up of different members. Well, now that Christ's body is in heaven, his new body on earth has become the Christian church. And every Christian has a different function in the body. Maybe you're the mouth and you teach Sunday school. Or maybe you're the fingers and you play piano for the church. Or maybe you're the feet and you run errands for the church. Or maybe you're the heart and you have a mercy gift. The way the church runs best is if you figure out which of the 19 gifts of the Holy Spirit is yours and then use that to serve the Lord. Now, you might be saying, how do I find out what my spiritual gift is? Well, that's, we're going to start now. If you would, look at verse 28. Here are some of the gifts. Verse 28, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And God has appointed, notice God appoints who gets the gift. You don't appoint what your gift is. God decides what your gift is. And God has appointed in the church first apostles. Here's the next lesson. The apostles are first the original 12 apostles who saw the resurrected Christ, they're the first. Now you might say, yeah, but they're dead, so there aren't apostles anymore. No, no, the apostles are still first in the church. We're talking the apostolic writings. We're talking the New Testament. Any really Christian church still puts the apostles first. The Bible, the New Testament gets highest say. It's the first. I will tell you, years ago, when I was still a member of the very liberal Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, we had a liberal bishop, 
and I talked to him one day, and I said, you know, Bishop, you've got the gay lesbian committee of our, of our synod here. Every one of them is liberal on that issue. Shouldn't we have somebody representing the conservative, biblical, traditional point of view on homosexuality? And the bishop said, well, Tom, I don't think that is as important as you do. Jesus said nothing about homosexuality. Well, yes, but Bishop, Jesus said nothing about rape or incest either. That doesn't mean he's in favor of it. We don't just believe the red letters in the Bible, what Jesus said. We believe also what the apostles wrote, the rest of the New Testament, which does address these issues. So we've got whole churches that don't put the apostles first anymore. They put the, their personal opinions first. Let's see what the second highest in the church was. First are the apostles, Paul says in verse 20, 28, then prophets, all right, prophets are second. In the New Testament age, the, apostles, the prophets, sometimes they told the future like Agabus did, that there's going to be a famine, but normally the prophets were the ones who just gave the messages of God. Some people think modern day preachers is pretty much the same as the gift of prophecy, maybe so, but do we have good preachers in the church or do you ever get supernatural words in your church? We need to be open to that. Test it, but be open to it. So first apostles, the apostolic writings. Second, the prophets or the preachers who submit to the apostolic writings. Third in, in the church, teachers. So maybe that's your gift. The third is teachers. Maybe you're a great teacher, so teach Sunday school or lead a Bible study in your home or uh, be an evangelist. Next gift, gift number four, is workers of miracles. Miracles. Maybe that's your gift. Maybe the Lord has used you to do some miraculous things. That can be a gift. Next gift Healers, you know, maybe that's your gift. Maybe the Lord uses you to pray for people, the gift of healing or healers. Next gift, administrators. The gift of administration. You know, we need good administrators in the church. The elders and the deacons, hopefully, you've got elders or deacons in your church, and they're doing the administration of the church. You know, I will tell you this. I, I preached at my home church in Omaha some time ago. And an old man came up to me afterwards and said, Tom, you're a preacher. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. But you know, can I tell you this? The pastor I grew up under in my church in Omaha, wonderful pastor, wonderful administrator. Now, his preaching style, I kind of got lost when he preached, but man, could he administer a church. So every pastor has different strengths and weaknesses, but I would encourage you, if your gift is not preaching, don't spend a lot of time in the pulpit. You know, be the administrative pastor and let somebody else do the preaching. Um, one more gift is verse 28, speakers in various kinds of tongues. You know, maybe you, have, maybe you have this gift that you're able to speak in a language that you don't even know what you're saying, but you are praying to the Lord about whatever needs prayer. Paul calls this speaking, uttering the mysteries of God in the spirit. You know, if I can tell you my story quickly on this. I was 15 years old at that church in Omaha, Lutheran Church, reading my Bible. Acts chapter 2, people are speaking in tongues. So I went to my Lutheran pastor. I said, Pastor, how come people aren't doing this in church today? Well, he got mad at me. I was innocent. I didn't know that speaking in tongues was a big controversy in the church. So I said, okay. But you know what I did? I prayed, Lord, I think I remember laying in bed praying, Lord, if, you're, if it's your will, give me the gift of tongues. And I got really scared because I thought it was going to happen and nothing happened. But about six months later, I woke up in the middle of the night speaking in this language that I didn't know. And, you know, it wasn't spooky at all. I, I could start it. I could stop it. I could speed it up, slow it down. So I thought this must not be it. <laughs> I go to college, and I'm in a Bible study, and this college girl says, starts talking about speaking in tongues, and I said to her, well, you know, I thought I did that once too, but, you know, I could control it. I don't think, she said, no, that's it. Now, you're supposed to use that as your private prayer tongue or in public if there's an interpreter, and that's one way you talk to the Lord. I've been doing it ever since. But not every person gets that gift. Again, different parts of the body do different things. Put them all together, and the church works. 
Next. That's the list. Now, I, I hope everybody watching this show goes to church. Can we just take a moment and can you test your church to see if you have a New Testament church? Let's start. Number one, if you remember, the apostles are first. Are the apostolic writings first in your church? There are Methodist, Lutheran, Episcopal, uh, United Church of Christ, uh, Presbyterian churches that shy away from calling God Father. I went to a UCC, United Church of Christ congregation. The woman gets up, let's do the Lord's Prayer. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven. They're correcting Jesus' Lord's Prayer. Are the apostles first of your church? There are churches that are paying for abortions in their health care plans. There are churches that are promoting homosexuality and have practicing homosexual pastors. If you're an ELCA Lutheran, Presbyterian Church USA, uh, United Church of Christ, they do that. Are the apostles first in your church? Are the apostolic writings first in your church? Or are human opinions holding sway? Second thing, does your church have prophets? Do you have good preachers of the Word of God? Third thing, do you have uh, teachers in your church, good Sunday school teachers, etc.? Are there miracles in your church? Uh, do you have healers in your church? Do you have helpers in your church? You can tell the people that have the gift of helps because they're always willing to do whatever. Um, do you have good administrators in your church, speakers in various kinds of tongues? That is the way that Paul says the church is to perform or function. One last point. Let me turn ahead to the other chapter on gifts in 1 Corinthians, and it's chapter 14, verse 1. Paul writes, Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. So here's the, the last lesson I want to leave you with. A Christian's duty is to earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. So can I ask you to do something? For the next seven nights before you go to bed, pray this prayer. God, what is my spiritual gift? What, what have you gifted? I don't want to wait like John Bunyan until I'm 50. God, show me now. What is my spiritual gift and how can I use that to serve the church? Do that for the next seven nights. Uh, there are other lists if you turn to Romans 12, if you turn to Ephesians 4. We didn't go through all 19 gifts of the Holy Spirit, but read Romans uh, chapter 12, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and put them all together. One gift that we did not hit is called the gift of wisdom. And sometimes God just gives you the right thing to say. I mean, I, I was five years old. I have a clear memory of this. I was five years old. I couldn't sleep. I walk into the living room crying, and I said, Mom and Dad were watching TV. Mom and Dad, I can't get to sleep. And, and I remember saying, I'm thinking about Bugs Bunny and cartoons, but I just can't get to sleep. And my mom said, just think about Jesus, and you'll fall asleep. At age five, the only thing I knew was from Sunday school, two songs, Jesus Loves the Little Children and Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. At age five, I went to bed and I sang those songs in my head over and over till I fell asleep. I did that ages five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, all the way to age 12. I did that every night before I went to bed. That did something to me. And one gift you can have is called the gift of wisdom where the Lord just says stuff through you. All right, I'll close with this. I hope you get the main thing is that the apostles are first, the Bible is first, the apostolic writings are first. And if you have a pastor who's not following the apostolic writings, get a new pastor or get a new church. You know, I'll close with this. I had a 16-year-old boy say to me, Tom, I have read the entire Bible through four times. There, there's a young man who's putting the apostles, the apostolic writings first. The religious person in my family when, and when I grew up was my Aunt Marge, my mom's sister. She was very vocal about her Christian faith. The last four years of her life, Aunt Marge was blind. And I can remember having the last talk with her long distance. Aunt Marge, are you you're ready to meet the Lord? Oh, Tommy, I know my sins are forgiven through the blood of Christ. He's my only hope. And she said, Tommy... These last four years that I've been blind, I've listened to the entire Bible on tape 17 times in four years. 
I hope you read your Bible. If you don't, get a Bible, keep it out, don't put it on the shelf, read your Bible daily, and put the apostles first. Amen. Welcome to the portion of the pastor's study where we now ask Pastor Brock to share with us his knowledge of scripture and his insights to answer questions we have regarding the Bible, our Lord, and our everyday walk with him. Pastor Brock, you were talking about spiritual gifts, okay? Does every Christian have at least one spiritual gift? That's what the Bible says. Every, God has a portion to the to believers, each one as he has determined. So every person has at least one, every Christian has at least one gift of the Holy Spirit. Can they have more than one I gift? Think, I think you can. I've got preaching and teaching, I think. Uh, other people can have administration and healing. It doesn't say you only have one. You can have a number of gifts. How does a person uh, tell them? themselves what that gift How is. How do you find out? This can take some time. <clears throat> and Jackie, uh, I got a kind of a word from the Lord that I was to become a preacher and a teacher. I think that's unusual. But you know, like, I think I, think I would give people's advice. Uh, first of all, pray about it. James chapter 1 says, if you're lacking wisdom and you ask in faith, God will show you. So Lord, what is my gift? And then you wait on the Lord for him. But sometimes he talks to us through other people. And if I do a lot of speaking, and I have a few people take me aside and say, you know, no offense, but who knows what you just said. That's probably not your gift. But you're really a good administer, administrator. Why don't you run this program for us, et cetera? We need, you know, Jackie, <laughs> I can tell you the story uh, at, at our church. One day, a woman got up to sing a solo. And I don't mean to be cruel, but it was so bad. And after church, and she sang real loud. After church, a couple people, I heard them through the corner of my ear. That was so wonderful. And I'm thinking, don't tell her that. She'll want to sing next Sunday, you know. And <laughs> we need to be lovingly honest. And if somebody does not have the gift of preaching, don't tell them to be a preacher. If they're not a singer, don't ask them to do the solo. Yeah. But if they wanted to. Then you kindly say, I think you're more gifted to do this. <laughs> okay. It's hard to do, but somebody's got to do it. Okay. Can you have a gift for a season or mm -hmm. a certain period of time, yeah. or does it change? You know, that's a good question. I don't know that there's a clear Bible verse on that. It seems to me that if you've got the gift of teaching, that's your gift for probably the rest of your life. But it never says you can't have it for a season either. So I think we leave that question kind of in limbo, maybe. God will maybe tell us in heaven whether it was right or not. Yeah, let's hope we get it right here. <laughs> so some, t some churches teach that every Christian can speak in tongues. Uh-huh. Is that true? Well, if I... If it's a gift, I don't know that... I don't, certainly don't feel that God has given me the gift of speaking in tongues. Yes, and now here's the deal. Paul says, earnestly does desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. So we are to pray, Lord, if you want me to have the gift of tongues, give it to me. If you want me to have the gift of healing, give it to me. We're to seek all of the gifts. My disagreement with some Pentecostals is they will say, every Christian can speak in tongues. And Paul says, not all speak in tongues, do they? And the answer to that is no. So, I, you know, in the book of Acts, a lot of people speak in tongues. It's probably more prevalent than we're willing to let it be. But to say that every single Christian will speak in tongues, Paul says, not all speak in tongues, do they? And the answer is no. So the Bible actually gave us the guidance to read what the spiritual gifts yes, are. Yes. It wasn't determined by a church body no. or anything. It was determined yep. through the scriptures. So again, there's 19 gifts of the Holy Spirit. I've only touched on some of them. You, you read Romans chapter 12, Ephesians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapters 12 and 14, and you'll get them all. Okay, Pastor Brock, isn't there a place in the Bible where it says that the gifts should be done decently and in order? And in order, that's and right. And where is that? I, I believe it's 1 Corinthians, it's either 1 Corinthians 12 or 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So what does that mean? Well, it means, mean? Jackie, I went to a Pentecostal church once. And during the worship service, everybody all over the place started speaking in tongues at the same time. And Paul says, don't do that. 
read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 14. If you're going to have speaking in tongues, one person at a time, and make sure there's an interpreter who can say what that language was so they can build up and, and interpret it in English for the people of the church. But if you don't have an interpreter, just pray to yourself and to the Lord, but not everybody all at the same time. It was kind of spooky. I was just going to say, how, how would they know what... No, each other was it was saying. just in some churches would have still no do. Blessings no, out I know of that whatsoever. I I, they just, but it, to me, Paul's pretty clear that if you're going to have speaking in tongues in the service, and we should with, a, but with an interpreter is what he says. Okay, I think that church was a little out of line. And <laughs> My buddy and I just kind of tiptoed out of there. Oh, I can imagine. Um, so the Bible says that the gifts should be done decently and in order. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that? What's the order of doing? Right. Or, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't the, understand that. Yeah, the, the order part, again, we're talking, I think, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 or chapter 12. Um, here's how Paul says the order should be. You know, if someone has a hymn, someone has a teaching, you know, let things be done. So let people do it in order. Uh, let one preacher preach and then let another preacher preach. And then if somebody has a gift of tongues, you let that happen with an interpreter following. That's what he meant by order. Because Paul says in Corinth, in Corinth people were walking into church and it was kind of craziness. Paul says, no, no, let's do things decently and in an order. So how did the early church do a worship service. I mean, yeah. the early church didn't have a building. Right. I mean, the churches were met in homes. Yes. There were yes. so many things yep. that are different than today. Yep. So let me read the verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. Paul writes, um, What then, brothers? When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. If anyone speak in a tongue, there should be only one or two, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. So in the early church, that's how they did church. They'd have a tongue or interpretation. They'd have a preacher, but they might have another preacher follow him, and they had a hymn, and they, they so, you know, basically that's the way the early, that we're, we're getting an inside glimpse of early Christian worship when you read 1 Corinthians 14. But there's so many churches today that don't follow any set pattern. I mean, there's not a standard that right. every church follows that yeah. some you have to have this, this, yeah. this. Some churches this. are very, what they call low church, very non-liturgical. There's just kind of, uh, you just sing a couple of hymns, you preach and you pray and you go. Other churches are highly liturgical. You, you do the creed, you do the uh, liturgy, and both are fine. But we got to allow the Holy Spirit to budge both. I, there, there's some churches that are so low church, I think, can we get a little formality, please? It's so shucks, folks, you know. But then some churches are so liturgical, and you can't budge the liturgy because that's from heaven, you know. And so we need to be open to the Holy Spirit working in either, either atmosphere, but be open to the Holy Spirit doing something different. <laughs> Do, does every Christian church believe that everybody has gifts or I mean well, like there are Roman some, Catholicism yeah they they mm -hmm. tend to believe in the gifts of the spirit the gift there are some churches some very conservative they tend to be like Baptist type churches and I'm not saying this of all Baptists but some very conservative Baptist and fundamentalist churches believe that the gifts of the Holy Spirit tongues uh, interpretation healing that all stopped in the first century after the New Testament got completed. And their argument is, when the New Testament was completed, we don't need these supernatural gifts anymore. The reason I don't believe that is I don't, think any, I don't see any verse that says in the Bible, once the Bible's completed, the gifts are gone. So. so I guess, Tom, are you saying that we should have tongues, interpretation, and prophecies and worship services today? Uh, we should be open to it. Now, I got to admit, you know, uh, overwhelmingly in the services that I've been part of, there hasn't been that in it. Uh, but if we're going to be New Testament, we have to be open to these things. Yeah. Okay. Some churches teach that the spiritual gifts, like tongues, ended in the first century when the Bible was completed. Mm -hmm. Where did they get this yeah. from? And I guess right. the That's second what we part just of my question would be, is this true? Right. That we, so <laughs> let me tell you the verse that they think says this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter, where it says, as, uh, verse 9, 
As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For now we know in part, prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the imperfect shall pass away. Well, that's a reference to Jesus' second coming. That's not a reference to the completion of the New Testament. The perfect coming, because, Jackie, the perfect has come, the New Testament has come. We still need teachers in the church. We still need knowledge in the church. We still need administrators in the church. <coughs> Excuse me. So I don't think you can use 1 Corinthians 13 to say the gifts have stopped. Okay. You know, I think that finding your spiritual gift has got to be one of the most difficult things for any Christian because they hear somebody say, oh, I can do this and I can mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to take the time to pray. You do. But you have to be sure that it truly is a gift that God's giving well, you because it, 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 I in think a way. I would like to think that I could have this certain yeah, gift. Yeah. Can, is it wrong to ask no, God to I give think you it, that gift? The Bible says earnestly desire spiritual gifts. So it's fine to seek the Lord on this. But then as Clint Eastwood says, a man's got to know his limitations. <laughs> so Jackie, if you're going to ask me to administer the finances of the church, I'll say, sorry, a man's got to know his limitations. I'll preach and teach. Don't ask me to do the finances. So uh, part of this is learning to say yes to what the Lord is telling you to say yes to and no to what the Lord is telling you to say no to. Tom, we've got about 40 seconds left in mm -hmm. that. And, you know, I think it's amazing that we've been doing this show now for 27 yeah. uh, ever, ever since 1988, what is, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> All right, 27 <laughs> years. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, and, you know, we just keep praising the Lord and thanking Him for all the viewers that write us and talk to us mm -hmm. and tell us how much they appreciate this show. But we most of all praise God that He's given us this opportunity and that we've had this length of time together. Yes, we have. So, God bless you all until we're together again next time at the Pastor's Study. Thank you for watching The Pastor Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the gospel of Christ because of our generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org. Or write The Pastor Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always.